Hello, everybody. Shalanda here with Tune Up Tuesdays, Speak Shalanda. I wanted to um, thank everyone for uh, joining in on this great evening. And um, as we are continuing on in the realm of relationships and talking everything relationships, uh, your relationship with God, as well as your relationships with others. And uh, so tonight, um, just briefly had a, a scriptural reference that really spoke to me. I have been uh, repeating this particular verse um, very frequently. Um, I really just wanted it to um, just soak in and um, just really to um, get a revelation from God and um, I want to believe that God is still dealing with me. This is the, the scripture that I wanted to share on tonight. And it's actually from Ephesians um, chapter five, verses 15 through 17. And I'm reading it in the Amplified version. So it reads, look carefully then how you walk, live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, parentheses, sensible, intelligent people, uh, mo making the very most of the time, buying up every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. <laughs> That's a whole, there's a whole lot. There's so many uh, words that just, you know, scream, you know, for revelation and for understanding. Um, but we're going to start with the first part of that um, in, in verse 15. Look carefully then how you walk. And I know a lot of people, when you read the, the title of this uh, particular video, you might be thinking, why is this or how is this related to relationships or problems in our relationships? And I think that a lot of times we as people, human beings, um, we don't want to talk about what we're dealing with. We don't want to talk about where our problems are. And even though relationships are, you know, a combined effort of two or more people, um, then we have to focus on ourselves. And that's oftentimes what we don't want to do. We want to avoid it at all costs. And I'll be the first to admit that when I was, especially when I was married, you may or may not know, I was married before. And, um, my first marriage, we'll put it that way, because I do pray and believe that I'm going to get married again. But um, I remember praying to God, you know, God, can you work on him? This is the problem that he has. This is all the issues that he has. And it's not working for me. I'm not happy with that part of him. So God, if you wouldn't mind, help him with that. Mind you, I have problems too. But what we do, we magnify the problem of problems of other people or the issue and the faults of other people um, because it impacts our lives and we want people to do better by us or do right by us. So I recall many a times praying and asking God to fix him or not even in my marriage, you know, in relationships in general, my managers, my coworkers, my friends, my relatives, siblings, whomever, God fix them. I'm okay because, you know, I'm talking to you every day. So I know you're going to work on me, but can you fix them? So how do we magnify, you know, other people's problems, but we don't magnify our own. And so that's the first thing that I got. Let's take a step back and focus on the things that you're dealing with. And so with that same verse, look carefully then how you walk. So pay attention to, to how you walk, pay, pay attention to how you live, pay attention to how you treat people, pay, pay attention to how you 
how your facial expressions are. Pay attention to what you do. Pay attention to what you don't do. Pay attention to what you say. Pay attention to what you don't say. Pay attention to how you act or respond. Pay attention to how you don't act or don't respond. Carefully. He says, carefully. Look carefully. Pay careful attention. So this was my revelation. Don't neglect opportunities to care for yourself. We're not just talking about, you know, um, taking the time to care for yourself and giving you some me time you know, for relaxation. We're talking about giving you some me time to focus on things that you need to work on. Focus on areas in your life, mentally, emotionally, physically, even spiritually, that you have problems in and that you need to grow in. Look carefully then how you walk. And the other part of that verse says, live purposefully and worthily and accurately. Ooh, that's a lot. Purposefully. We talked about last week, we talked about diligence last week and coupled with diligence is being able to begin to focus on what purpose is in that situation. Because um, like we were talking about last week, we jump into things so quickly without thinking about what we're jumping into. All we know is all I care about is finding what I want. Whatever my desire is, whatever my need is, I'm focused on that. So whatever fulfills that, bring it, bring it on. I need it. But we oftentimes don't take time to be diligent in what we're stepping into, what we're walking into, what relationship we jump into. And then we miss out on opportunities to be attentive to things that are probably important for us to focus on and be, be aware of. I know when you fall in love, you don't want to think about and oftentimes we don't even pay attention to the things that are, you know, they're good. They're okay. I, I can manage with those things. It's not as bad. I can handle it. Oh, but when it starts getting on your nerves, <laughs> when it starts uh, challenging you, that's when it becomes a problem. So this is a time for us to be diligent and find out what the purpose is in that relationship is. Before we jump all in, what's the purpose in it? And we talked about last week how when you pay attention to the purpose, when those problems arise, it won't necessarily make you run. It might, <laughs> but it won't necessarily make you run or throw in the towel. It just gives you insight in knowing how to maneuver through it. So if you are living purposefully, then your attitude will be that of purpose, your approach, your response, your vision, what you see, what you don't see, purpose will then come into play. Live purposely, worthily, your self-worth, <laughs> your self-worth, knowing who is on the inside of you, who's worthy on the inside of you, but recognizing your self-worth. So living worthily, are you worth? Are you living a life that is worthy? When you're praying for blessings, are you living a life that is worthy of those blessings, of those changes, of those, of those things that you're expecting God to do in your life? Are you living worthily, right? And then accurately. Oh, that's just self-explanatory. Can we just be right? Can we just live right? Uh, can we just live righteous? Can we just um, have a mindset of righteousness and how we treat people and how we are in relationship with people? This is not as the unwise and witless, but as wise, being sensible, intelligent people. Okay, I'm gonna put myself on the chopping block because. God has illuminated things about me and I'm finally growing into that level of maturity where I can admit it and I can put it out there. But I hope I'm not the only one that can admit to the fact that I've made some unintelligible decisions in my life. Yeah, I have jumped in, into relationships. I have jumped into situations without... Tacking, without tapping in 
to wisdom, without tapping into my own intellect that God has given me, I was solely driven by emotions. I was solely driven by what I physically saw or what I audibly heard. I thought that that was going to be the best thing for me, the best opportunity or the best relationship to jump into. And so because of that, over the course of that, that time that I was in the midst of that situation, then you turn around and find out it wasn't the best situation. You begin to question, I was a fool. Do you have good sense, girl? What were you thinking? You look, you look back, who am I talking to? Who has looked back over your life and saw some pictures? two, three, five, 10, 15, 30 years ago, even <laughs> of some exes, ex-friends, ex-boyfriends, ex-companies, ex-bosses, ex-business partners. And you looking back, Facebook will remind you in a minute of some relationships that you were in. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, what, what was I thinking? Did I have did I have right sense 10 years ago? What was I thinking? Sensible, intelligent people. Verse 16 says, making the very most of the time, buying up each and every opportunity because the days are evil. Making the very most of the time. Because I know that I have dwindled away a lot of time, um, commodity, uh, time being a commodity that I once didn't even care about. I didn't think about, I, time was on my side for a long period of my time, of my life. Time was not necessarily um, a, a, a need. It was a want, it was just something that I was, I had it, I had access to it, and it was my thing. Time was my thing back then. Now time is God's thing to me. So I don't own time. Time is so limited. Time is so precious. And when we jump into situations and we jump into relationships without using our sense, without using our wisdom, without using our intellect without taking time to ensure that what we're getting into is purposeful according to God's will. We're getting to will, but I just wanted to break that down for a moment because we should be taking advantage of every opportunity. Yes, because that's what it says, buying up every opportunity that is presented to you. But are you making the most of it while you're in it? Or are you disgruntled? Are you arguing all the time? Are you fighting and bickering and disagreeing? Are you making the best of every time and every opportunity? Because the days are evil. When I was reading that, oh my God, what does that mean? I mean, I can, I can gather uh, because the days are evil because life is not getting easier. There's evil all around. There's wickedness all around. So time is not on our side because we're constantly being pulled away from the greatness life has to offer us because evil is, is so prevalent in this day and age. But then, the, but then God began to speak to me about the sinfulness of the world because that can dominate our energy, that can dominate our time, that can pull us away from walking a purposeful life. And then what is not promised to us? We're on this journey, life is not promised to us. The days are not promised to us. So we're exhausting days and time and moments and opportunities we're not making the best of it. And I, I want to believe that making the best of time and opportunity and relationships is really honing in on its purpose. 
Because then we'll begin, begin to understand seasons. And that's a whole nother message. And it's a whole nother conversation. Beginning to really understand what seasons are and what they represent in our lives. So as we're maneuvering through life, we have a little bit of insight. Oh, I could keep going in this verse, but uh, let's see, where are we? 17, verse 17. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish. Do not be vague. Do not be thoughtless. That talks, that, that kind of takes me back to last week when we were talking about not being diligent in our lives and in our decision making and in our you know progression in life. Um, but when we are vaguely going through life, meaning we're not even paying attention, you know, um, I, I'm a recruiter uh, in my career, and I've been a recruiter for several years, but I remember. Um, a candidate saying to a colleague of mine that I don't get into the weeds of things. I focus heavily on, you know, just grab, grasping a hold of the, the, the bigger things, the bigger picture, but the weeds I'm not into because that just wastes time. I just want to focus on the big picture, not the weeds. But I want to submit to you that I think this is a time in our lives where we need to be focused on the weeds because the weeds are indicators. The weeds can help us to understand purpose. The weeds can help us identify seasons, i.e. when grass turns to, green grass turns to brown grass, right? We know that seasons are changing. So there are identifiers in our seasons. There are, our, there are identifiers throughout our lives that will help us to understand or give us vision and insight, and concepts and clarity uh, that we need. If you're praying for those things, I hope this is answering your prayers and giving you the answers that you've been looking for, that you have to take some time, be a little thoughtful in your decisions, not so quick to jump and walk into things. But this is a season for you to focus. I feel this prophetically. Focus on the weeds in this season. Don't be thoughtless. Don't be foolish. We're done. I'm done with being foolish. I know we're going to make some mistakes. I know we're going to fall prey to some very tough issues in our lives. And we're not going to get it right all the time. But let's be diligent. Uh, let's be intentional. Let's be purposeful. Let's be determined to not go backwards. When I, say, when I say go backwards, let's not revert back to the way that we used to think. Let's not still be approaching life the way that we did two, five, 10, 15, 30 years ago. Let's not. If we're still there, then how on heaven's green and beautiful earth are we going to get to where we're headed? How in, how in the world are we going to access the greatness that God has for us when we're still holding on to, even to certain ways and characteristics? There are things we're still holding on to. We, us, are still holding on to. And I gather that if we let go of some old ways, some old ways of thinking, then we might be able to capture what we need to capture in order to get to the next. But it says, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. How many of us can say that in the relationships that we are in or have been in in the past that we went in with understanding? Or were we just kind of blinded to the beauty of meeting a need, fulfilling a desire, blinded to certain truths? Sometimes we don't want to really hear 
the full on truth of what God can reveal to us about a situation or about a relationship that we're in. I don't know if this is speaking to someone who's really gravely dealing with um, something in their relationships. And maybe this, this particular series as um, that you're seeing um, and constantly being uh, reminded of, you finally decided to join because you're dealing with something and it's heavy on your heart and you really need resolve and you really need answers and you really need some peace, some peace of mind in the situation or in that relationship. But this verse right here, it's really highlighting something that I think we just miss. We miss it, we miss it on so many levels because we're hungry for what we want. I mean, we all know if we're believers, we know that our flesh is very hungry it wants what it wants, right? And so it's gonna go after whatever it is that's going to cause it to be fulfilled. But when we are walking in the spirit, when God is illuminated on the inside of us, it's the spirit of God is hungry for that which is spiritual, not that which is natural. So what's spiritual? What's eternal? That which comes from God. That is his will. That is his, the essence of who he is on the inside of us. His will manifested in the earth. His glory, which is us manifesting in the earth to do with that which he has called us to do. Extending the very works that our savior Jesus Christ began. We are continuing that work. Knowing that number one is our will and is our purpose. But let's now let's talk about the weeds, the weeds of the problems and the issues that we're dealing with. And you're constantly asking why. We've talked about this before in a previous uh, meeting where we talked about individuals who are constantly asking why. Why am I going through this? Why is this still a constant in my life? Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you're not going to be asking the questions why, because that's not what's going to give you peace. Because even when you get the answer to that why question, it's still not going to change the situation. You understand? It's not going to really change the situation. It may change the fact that you have something else. <laughs> On top of what you, maybe it, maybe it did answer a question, but it's not necessarily gonna change the situation. What's going to change the situation is your outlook. And what changes your outlook is your understanding. You probably won't be able to say that you understand every single thing that you're going through but little by little, this is an experience that I can say personally that I've been praying for this one thing and asking God for it for so many years and he's yet to grant it to me. <laughs> but it was a moment in my life where I said, God, this is a very strong desire of mine. And I've been praying and asking you for it. And God, I know that you will give me the desires of my heart. You said it in your word and I believe it and I trust it. And when I began to relinquish that desire back to him so that I won't fall prey to that desire to go pursue it myself because I can and I have first tried to get it myself. Well, God, I feel like you've given me everything that I, that I need to go get it myself. And I don't know how many times I've had to have my hand slapped, my butt slapped. <laughs> Learn the hard way that this is not your lane. Stay in your lane, my dear. What you will have is what you will have when you're supposed to have it. Stay in your lane and allow me to work in and through you. So what you will gain um, will come when it's supposed to come. But I was praying and asking God to give me this, give me this, give me this. And I finally just stopped and said, God, your will be done. Ah, you hear that? Your will be done, not mine. 
but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so the moment that I relinquished that to him, that desire back to him, that's when he began to give me understanding as to why or why not he's yet to grant that which I'm praying for. Little by little, he began to drop these, what I consider nuggets of wisdom, nuggets of revelatory knowledge that gave me such a level of peace that, okay, I can walk this thing out. It doesn't feel good to have a strong desire and it not be fulfilled. I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm definitely with you. It's not, it doesn't feel good to constantly be praying for relief or peace in an area and you're not getting it. You're constantly waiting for it months or days, months, years even, and it not be granted. I'm with you, I get it. But we just talked about, let's not waste time. It's a commodity, it's a gift on being disgruntled, and being angry being frustrated or depressed or saddened or pulling ourselves away and isolating ourselves from our life or throwing temper tantrums. That's me, I'll admit to it. But positioning ourselves to gain whatever level of understanding that God will allow us to have, because he knows best. He knows what we can and cannot handle. So putting ourselves in a position to hear from God, what level of understanding he will allow us to hear or receive. And then we seek his wisdom in that. Little by little, it says, firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is firmly grasping. How many times do we firmly grasp things that we want, that we desire? I want I want a $2 million house. Yes, that would be nice. I want a $2 million house. So I'm firmly grasping that God is going to grant me that. How is it that we can firmly grasp something that we want that may seem you know, a long ways out, or we may not really know or understand how it's going to happen, but it's a tangible thing. So in our mind's eye, we can see it, right? But why can't we firmly grasp God's will? We can firmly grasp our own will, but why can't we firmly grasp God's will? When he, when he finally gives us, we come to that space and we come to that moment or we come to that season where God reveals something to us, but nah, that doesn't make sense. Nah, I don't want to accept that. I don't want to wait that long. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I'm growing weary. Do not be weary in well-doing. If you don't faint, it's going to happen. Be mindful of the time, the energy that you're exhausting. The scripture again says, Look carefully then how you walk. Pay attention to how you're walking in this thing. Pay attention to how you're focused, even in the midst of this troubled situation and relationship that you're in. Pay attention. Be careful. Be purposeful. Be worthily and accurately living and walking. Not as unwise and witless, but as wise. Because I'm not here to take the problem from you. And God isn't necessarily taking every single problem for, from you. There's a purpose in it. I know you know it. There's a purpose in that. There's a purpose in it. And if you just stop for a brief moment. I was reading my sister's Facebook post. Stop, breathe, look up, take a moment. God, this is rough. This is so rough. This is so hard. But I'm willing to stop for a moment, acknowledge the gift of time that you've given me that I have no control over, 
I'm going to seek understanding in this season. I'm going to seek your will in this season. And I'm not going to make any sudden moves until you tell me so. In the meantime, I'm going to be diligent with what you've granted me thus far. Because what, what I do have is perfect. It doesn't feel like it. But the truth of the matter is, what you have given me is perfect. It's just what I need in this season because there is no possible way that God will have you in a place or have you in a situation and you not be equipped. If you don't believe that you're equipped, then you've not tapped into the truth of who you are. And what, is, what does it take for us to get to this point where we know what we have, we know what we possess? Understanding. And grasping God's will. Ah, it's the it's 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 everything. It's literally everything. We don't want it because the way this world is going, I mean, not in a nothing microwavable situ. Listen, we're past microwaves. What's what's the you know we got the toaster ovens or or no the the quick cookers. In five minutes, I can baste a whole or bake a whole chicken. Maybe not five minutes, but whatever. I'm a, I'm vegan, so. <laughs> but whatever this mindset is that this world has captured and, and being captivated by, the people of God got to step out of that. We we are not, you know, easy bake oven living. Okay, no, 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 no. Because we're still here on Earth. And God's thoughts are not ours. His ways are not ours. So if we want to live the life that he has promised us and experience this beauty, what I believe is heaven on earth, then we got to tap into what it is that is heavenly. And that is God's mind. That is God's will. That is God's way. Oh, but if we would just take some time. Take a real time. To smell the roses and not throw the roses, not beat somebody with a thorn. <laughs> but take some time to embrace what God has allowed in our lives. Get a little understanding from it. Seek his wisdom and wait on it. Just wait a little longer. Wait a little longer. And then be open to what he reveals. Be open to what he reveals. It's not, it's, it's not going to hurt you. It's going to help you. I can guarantee you that what God gives is always going to help us. It's just whether we want to see it that way. Guys, I could talk about this all day. <laughs> but um, I'm so grateful that you are viewing and um, I do pray that whatever it is that you um, tapped into this video for, there was something that really uh, spoke to you and connected uh, to you and to maybe your situation. And I do hope and pray that it penetrated some area in your heart and even your mind and that it's soaking up in your spirit and really rejuvenating you and getting you to a place where even when you click off this video, you're going to spend time to talk to God. That's the first thing. I'm a life coach and I will not be asking anyone, click off this video and call me right away. I want you to click off this video and call God right away. And then if he leads you to call me, okay, then we can talk, okay? Because my goal, my desire, and I know God's will for my life is to ensure that you grow closer to God. And if I can help you in any possible way, God is, is most certainly going to connect us in some form or fashion. But I really do appreciate you being here. I'm super excited to um, continue this journey with you all in the arena of relationships. Um, it's my passion. It's, 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 it's all that I do <laughs> um, in helping people grow in their relationship with God as well as others. So um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, stay tuned for next week. 
Um, I will keep on pressing on and I pray that you do the same. I love you. God loves you. Stay focused, stay diligent, stay in his will, stay in his presence. And I know God will bless you all the same. Take care. Love you. Thank you.